Well, hockey fans in Ottawa, for them, the University of North Dakota Fighting Hawks are must-see TV for them right now, and not just because there isn't any Senators hockey to watch at the moment, but because they've got four draft picks on the roster, including this one, Jacob Bernard Docker, first-round pick back in 2018. Jacob, thank you very much for doing this. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. No problem. I, I want to start. I mean, you go nearly nine months between games. What was the feeling like, the sense of anticipation last Wednesday after finally getting a chance to play against somebody that wasn't your own teammate? Yeah, really exciting. I think uh, obviously we've done a, you know, a lot of hard work up to this point in the last three months, um, kind of just grinding out in the gym, on the ice, um, in the classroom as well. So it's, it's nice to kind of get away and obviously play some games and, uh, you know, it's been a lot of fun so far. And your team, at least at the time of this conversation, is up to a 3-1 and one start here this season. And, you know, certainly the Twitter audience isn't uh, the, to the only method of, of gauging interest, but it, it is a method for sure. And it seems like uh, whenever the Fighting Hawks have been playing so far this year, there's been a lot of buzz on, on social. Have you guys been feeling it at all down there in Omaha? Yeah, I think that's something that, yeah, as a, as a hockey player, I guess you learn to deal with over the years. And um, you know, I think our coaching staff and, and um, you know, the organization as a whole has done a, a really good job of kind of just um, having us dial in on, on just, uh, you know, just our team and, and the people around us for this bubble and, um, you know, kind of, kind of leave the outside noise um, to a far for now and um, just really focus in on, on our task at hand. Does it, does it make it any easier the fact that you're in that, that pod setting there where, I mean, outside of hockey and, and schoolwork, mm -hmm. there isn't much else to, to mm -hmm. distract you with? Absolutely. I think that, you know, that's one of the benefits. And I think the NCHC did a really good job of kind of setting this pot up. And, um, you know, you've got a game and a day off and a game and a day off. And um, we have a few back-to-backs coming up. So uh, it's a lot of hockey, uh, a lot of rest and recovery. And then, uh, you know, when you have some free time, it's, it's trying to get to some schoolwork. Okay. Uh, Tyler Clevin and uh, Jake Sanderson, a couple of defensemen uh, on your blue line. And, of course, two of the, the newest names in terms of the Senators' prospect pool. As a fellow defenseman yourself, what did you think of their first three games at uh, the collegiate level? And they, they looked awesome, I thought. Um, you know, huge congrats to those two going off to World Juniors. It's going to be, uh, you know, fun rooting for them and uh, seeing them play out there. And obviously our team misses them, but, um, you know, they've got a great opportunity in front of them. And, uh, you know, wish them nothing but the best. But, you uh, know, they're both, uh, both great guys and, um, you know, super good hockey players as well. So just ask you, Jacob, I mean, you and uh, a teammate of yours, um, Jasper Weatherby, before the first game, you guys uh, took a knee on the blue line during the national anthem uh, just to demonstra demonstrate the protest against uh, racial injustice and um, just be part of uh, the movement that we've really seen ever since the, the death of George Floyd earlier in, in 2020. I know you've talked a lot about your reason behind doing it. I am curious, though, if there was a, a message or a note or any type of feedback uh, you got from, from that day from, after that game uh, that, that really resonated with you. Yeah, there was a there's a lot of you know overwhelmingly positive feedback. Obviously, there's gonna there's gonna be some people that disagree, and you know me and Jasper knew that going in, and um, you know re we really thought that um, we wanted people to focus on uh, our message more than our action. And I think uh, at the end of the day, I think people did realize that. Um, you know, we were lucky enough to to have our media guy Brad Schlossman kind of release an article the day before, and um, you know explain why we were doing it so that you know people couldn't kind of take our our action of kneeling and kind of distort what we wanted to say. So um, I think overall it went really well and, um, you know, had some people reach out to me and, uh, you know, a few black hockey players that um, kind of just said that, you know, it made, made them feel a lot more comfortable um, just knowing that hockey culture is kind of changing. So, uh, you know, to me that made it all worth it. So, I mean, between that and, and I know you guys have arranged conversations just to, amongst your own teammates about this stuff. Uh, you guys are part of the UND uh, student athlete uh, inclusion and uh, diversity council you wear a letter on your jersey like clearly leadership is is in your blood Jacob I'm wondering who did you kind of look up which leaders did did you kind of lean on as you were growing up as a, as a kid that have kind of maybe helped shape who you are today yeah man I think uh, mainly my parents my parents were huge for me growing up and um, you know they're a big reason I, I am the way I am today and um, I think they always just stress treating people equally um, you know you're a hockey player but at the end of the day you're a person and um, you know, you're only going to play hockey for so long. So, um, you know, do your best to, to make a difference in the community and um, just to be a good teammate and uh, be a good person. And with that, I mean, I'm sure you've had a chance to, obviously you've been to a, a couple of, of rookie camps with, with the Senators, but just given what, what they're trying to build uh, in Ottawa, how do you believe just uh, what your 
beliefs, your qualities, your characteristics as a player and a person? How do you think that all will one day uh, mesh together? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, for me being going to dev camp for, um, you know, I think it's three years now. Um, I think the whole thing that, that Ottawa is trying to stress is um, obviously they're trying to, to, you know, kind of rebuild the culture. And, you know, I think they're a, you know, super blue collar um, type of organization where they, they really want some hard workers. And, um, you know, I think they have that and they're trying to get more of that as well. So uh, for me, it's just trying to trying to do my best every day on the ice, um, you know, in the community as well. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully one day I can, I can make it there and, um, you know, hopefully make a difference on the Ottawa centers. Hockey fans got used to the term bubble during the Stanley Cup playoffs in the summer. You're playing in what's called a pod in, in Omaha, Nebraska. So without hockey and, and if you're not doing schoolwork, I understand you're not much of a video gamer. Like, what are you doing to, to keep yourself sane in, in your downtime? Yeah, we got, a, we got a pool table down in the lounge and uh, also um, – some darts and, and stuff like that. And, um, you know, have a, have some cornhole outside here. Uh, so guys have kind of been keeping busy with that. Um, me and Shane Pinto have been playing a ridiculous amount of pool. I'm actually up 50 bucks on him right now. So it's, uh, <laughs> we've been doing a little bit of gambling between us, but, um, uh, I don't even know if that's allowed in college hockey, but, <laughs> uh, it's been a lot of fun and, you know, we're, we're finding ways to keep busy. All right. I won't tell anyone if you don't. It, it, like, is Shane Pinto just really that bad, or are you a pretty good pool player? <laughs> um, maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> I don't know. Um, no, I'm not great, but uh, Pinner's, Pinner's been struggling against me. We've had uh, two Game 7 series, and I've won both of them in Game 7, and then we just uh, had a best of three, and I won that in Game 3. So they've been tight, but uh, I've been coming out on top. How competitive, how heated do those games get? Yeah, pretty heated. I think I've got about six or seven unread text messages from him right now. So he's uh, <laughs> probably down in the lobby storming around. <laughs> oh, good. Well, I'm sure at Sense fans will we'll love to hear that the, the friendly competition is already uh, at full, full head of steam here between the two of you. Um, I'm wondering, uh, Jacob, I mean, you talked about the influence that your, your parents have. I mean, unfortunately, the situation is you guys are playing in that pod until – the 20th, I mean, the, the border remains closed between Canada and the U.S., your family, so, of course, just outside of Calgary and in Cochrane. And then, you know, you're supposed to be playing games again here just before the new year. Like, what's, what's Christmas going to look like for your family? Yeah, I think this, this uh, year is obviously going to be a bit different, probably, probably a virtual Christmas. Um, I think just, just with me trying to get home um, and, and the complications of flying and having to get tested when I fly in and, and the, the, you know, the possible chance if I test positive that, you know, I wouldn't be able to play back in North Dakota for another two weeks um, and having to quarantine. So this year it's, it's going to have to be a FaceTime and, um, you know, a lot of texts and, and just keeping in contact, but uh, yeah, it's going to be tough not seeing them, but uh, you know, don't, don't have much of a choice. Yeah. I mean, is there, I would imagine there's a number of teammates of yours that are probably in the, the same boat. Like, is there anything planned about how you guys plan to, to celebrate together? <laughs> Uh, I mean, a few of us are possibly going on a trip. We, uh, we don't really have that quite figured out yet, but, um, no, just, just trying to be with teammates. I think, I think it's obviously a time where you're, you're usually with your family and, uh, you know, celebrating with, with family and friends. And I think, uh, this year's going to be special. Um, you know, I think it'll bring us uh, tighter as a group and as a team. Finally, last one for you. I mean, I don't want to look too far ahead and of course by asking this question I realize I'm doing exactly that I know your focus is is on some unfinished business there in North Dakota and the opportunity to perhaps win uh, a national championship sometime in, in 2021 but whenever the season does come to an end for you is the plan to to go pro or, or have you thought much about that yet yeah I'd say that's absolutely my goal this year I think uh, you know the way last year ended it was tough for us and um, you know we got a really good group here this year and I'm um, just trying to enjoy every moment in North Dakota. I think, uh, you know, obviously my goal is to get to Ottawa, but I think at the same time, it's about enjoying the process, um, enjoying the journey here in North Dakota. Um, you know, I've been treated exceptionally here and um, I've loved my time here. So I'm really just trying to take it all in. And um, at the same time, obviously, you know, that is my ultimate goal is to be an Ottawa center. Perfect. Jacob, really appreciate the time. Uh, stay safe, stay healthy and uh, continued success on the ice. Thanks for having me, Kyle.